हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज चैप्टर इज मैनेजिंग सॉइल एंड लैंड एंड द टॉपिक इज लैंड रिफॉर्म्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द डेफिनेशन ऑफ लैंड रिफॉर्म्स सेज दैट इट इज द रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ लैंड बिकॉज सिंस वी हैव द आइडिया बैक ऑफ द माइंड दैट वी हैव टू अपलिफ्ट द पुअर एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव टू ब्रिंग मैक्सिमम लैंड अंडर कल्टिवेशन सो इट्स लाइक नो वन शुड हैव स्पेयर और एक्स्ट्रा लैंड and it is a land which is a non performing land or not providing anything that is uh, uh, we can say the land is vacant uh, and no one is doing anything on the land land is going waste so it should not be the scenario and uh, such land which is useless waste extra is known as fallow land better this land should come under means the fallow land should come under cultivation and uh, production can also be increased and uh, the disparity that is the discrimination between the rich and poor can be equalized so therefore just keeping this idea in mind we have the definition of land reform as the redistribution of land from rich to poor so rich people those who have access of extra land which is not used for anything and poor are those uh, who don't have any land and uh, the main objective is that income should be increased production should be increased and the rural people can also be uplifted so it is uh, written here this is the reason why it is written here that the purpose of land reform is to help the weaker section of the society by doing justice to land distribution that is the distribution should be equal dividing land among the uh, rural people so that they uh, can perform cultivation over the land here you can see so it is written here that uh, land reform legislation or reform laws it means that the direction are uh, Uh, given by the central government and the provision of land reform laws are given by the central government it but otherwise it is under the control of the state government now because the intensity of the problem uh, the land reforms or the land laws uh, are different in different states so in that case depending upon where the problem is much severe and uh, where it is not that much severe the state government has to decide what should be done and what should be the pace or the speed of uh, redistributing the land among the rural people so the state government has its own discretion about uh, how and how fast uh, and up to what extent this land reform practice has to be followed so now in the below mentioned section there are uh, uh, six uh, sections there are total six sections and if we are doing land reform what exactly is the target so all six section should be the target as you can see during the land reform first one is abolition of intermediaries so intermediaries are the land collectors when we talk about uh, like uh, pre independent situation when the british rule was there and there uh, at the, at that time the lagan uh, system was there the lagan collection uh, was uh, done by the jamidars that the basically the intermediaries so means these are the people who actually mediocres so intermediaries are the mediocres between uh, the farmer and the government and uh, the they collect the rent for the function uh, that you are performing on your land so rent collectors basically are intermediate or intermediaries or mediocres generally uh, this was the land revenue in the form of lagan and uh, this system was followed quite uh, long time and uh, pre independence uh, time but nowadays also in some uh, interior areas you might be seen that this situation uh, where the government interference not much now the next is tenancy reforms it says that if a person it's li just like a tenant staying for a longer time in a house and at that time uh, he holds some rights uh, and uh, people tend to get insecure if a tenant is staying for suppose 10 to 12 years in that case he might get the house allotted and here we are talking about 20 to 25 years back this was the situation 
and uh, similar is there but uh, uh, for land reform the tenancy reform that is needed because uh, rural people are really poor and uh, to help them out uh, if a person is farmer and he is performing on the same land area for a longer time is actually given some permanent rights to uh, rights for the land holdings and these rights include uh, the heritability that means uh, uh, after the gone of the farmer this can be inherited by their children and the third one is tenancy regulation now the tenancy regulation means the regulation of the co contractual terms which uh, uh, if you are giving the land to perform uh, cultivation in india uh, it means in uh, hindi it is called batai par uh, dena it means batai if you talk about the tenancy regulation you see that uh, uh, what are the dealings that you are doing uh, whether you are exchanging it for money uh, means that uh, uh, you are giving your land uh, uh, for batai in exchange for money or uh, you are paying something that uh, or you make changes uh, it for the grains or you are exchanging in terms of grains so basically the crop share so it is just the format where is your kind of deal and tenancy regulation actually help you with the the deal so that you are not brought under exploitation and the fourth one is ceiling on land holdings so as we discussed earlier that uh, uh, if a person is holding much land so ceiling means the limitation the to stop the fixation that maximum a person can hold only uh, approximately 200 acres of land and beyond that it will be redistributed uh, so also if you are staying in one state and if you have assets in some other state and you are not doing anything there so in that case also the ceiling phenomena will be fixed up now the next is consolidated desperate land holdings it means that uh, generally this is a merging of uh, uh, land or the plots when you have small patches of lands and then you merge them all together and you uh, distribute them redistribute them so that they can be performed under cultivation so this is consolidated desperate land holdings now the next is compilation and updation of land records so since government is involved here the government is doing uh, so much for the rural people targeting so many areas where the people are brought under uh, uh, exploitation so that uh, cases all the uh, record that means the land record and what is the pattern of distribution land reform practice is supposed to done uh, is higher extent or lower exchange so that all the records are kept at one place so all these points uh, when you see the all uh, six points uh, like uh, ab uh, abolition of uh, intermediate or uh, mediocres tenancy reform tenancy regulation ceiling on land holding consolidation and compilation all these collectively uh, are uh, should be targeted under land reform if, if ever you have to write a detailed question on uh, land reform so this is the best uh, points or best thing that you can write about it now coming to the as you can see the land reform in india has four phases means uh, depending on what work is to be done in each phase now let us discuss phase one abolition of mediocres or intermediaries and tenancy reforms redistribution of land now in phase two we targeted the waste land means the land which is fellow or uh, which is not in use means we are not doing anything on the particular land so that it is targeted and uh, brought under cultivation to increase the production now in phase three it's particularly for uh, soil and water conservation and uh, water management because uh, uh, we know that it's not only about uh, land that uh, we are studying land management that's why we are studying land reform so land reform also takes care of the quality and texture of water and soil so watershed management you can see the watershed management 
and identification of waste and degraded land and uh, uh, we should keep this thing in our mind that uh, it should be done to improve the land revenue how the farmers should be helped to increase uh, the economy so that land revenue can be increased so that's all for today